So this is an episode of Scott Talks Law and welcome once again to another episode of Scott Talks Law. So in this episode you are going to do an introduction to civil procedure. So civil procedure is a branch of law that is concerned with the process of preparing, presenting and handling of claims for person. So civil procedure is governed by the civil procedure rules cap 21 as a source of civil procedure and also the constitution. So the civil procedure rules cap 21 is the main uh, source of civil procedure and it provides for the rules and orders of civil procedure, the rules and order of preparing, presenting and handling of claims for persons. So civil procedure cap 21 uh, also provides for the jurisdiction of uh, various courts so that uh, this one guides you so that you cannot uh, file a matter in a court that is not of competent jurisdiction because when you file a matter in a court that is not of competent jurisdiction that matter shall be struck out so the civil procedure rules captain one also provide for the rules and uh, ju jurisdiction of uh, various courts so um this w in general terms when you want to uh, institute a Proceed some proceedings. You must uh, first of all uh, summon. If you are a plaintiff, you must first of all summon the other party to uh, enter into appearance. So you, when you summon, the, maybe the defense side, the defense side is supposed to um, enter into appearance by filing a memorandum of appearance. And this memorandum of appearance is um, within 15 days. The, the other party must, must appear within 15 days by some by filing a memorandum of appearance which is signed uh, by the chief magistrate if it's the high court or the chief registrar if it is the if it is the cause of magistrate court so civil procedure is only mainly concerned with civil suits only concerned with civil suits and claims not uh, criminal claims so matters under civil procedure are of civil in nature so that is when um pleadings shall commence when um, someone has um as uh, being someone to enter to appearance as he has entered to appear by filing a memorandum of appearance within 15 days. So uh, this civil procedure is concerned with many applications in form of pleadings. And pleadings, these are written documentations um, detailing all the facts that are, are used in presenting, uh, preparing and handling of claims for persons. So there are so many uh, documents or applications that are involved under civil procedure. So you have applications like a uh, plaint, you're going to look at them, you have applications like a uh, plaint, uh, judicial review applications, applications for injunctions, applications for um, amendments, applications for amendments of defense and counterclaims, applications for the substitution of the plaintiff, applications for um, Ganesha applications under Order 23 applications of execution under uh, order 22 of the civil procedure rules applications for pauperism people who cannot afford the court fees applications for minors applications for decree and judgment applications for setting aside application for stay of execution and execution applications um, for um, there are so many applications that are involved we have applications for appeal that are commenced by filing a memorandum of appeal, then the record of appeal, and applications for review under Order 45 of the Civil Procedure Rules, and the injunctions are under Order 40 of the Civil Procedure Rules. So these applications are the ones that are drafted under Civil Procedure. So we are going to look at all these applications. So starting with the plaints, a plaint, um, first of all, when you want to file any application, you must first of all indicate the country where you are applying, you are drafting that application, like in the Republic of Kenya. After indicating the country, you indicate the court, like in the High Court of Kenya, maybe at Nilimani, at Kisumu, at Nairobi, at anywhere, depending on the place. So then you indicate the case number, then you indicate the parties. So first of all, you indicate the country, the Republic of Kenya, in the High Court of Kenya at Nilimani. Uh, civil case, uh, this number, and then the parties uh, between uh, party A and party B, you get the name of the party, but the party A versus party B. 
So a plaint, uh, when starting with a plaint, authenticating those parties and what, what you get the content, then after that you say, you want a file by to be served upon. So a plaint, when you start uh, drafting a plaint, you must first of all start by indicating the court uh, case number, uh, court, uh, the, indicate the country court case number, then the parties. After the parties indicate that word plaint, and below it you put on the place the first track. So the content of the plaints are just like the first summaries of the case. So you can start by identifying the uh, applicant and the respondent or the defendant the plaintiff by uh, saying that uh, the plaintiff is a male adult of sound mind, the defendant is a female adult of sound mind. Then you continue the facts of the plaint. Uh, then after that you indicate your prayers. You must indicate your prayers at the plaint. So these are the prayers that the court will be guided uh, with when coming up with judgment. So you pray for maybe uh, general damages, punitive damages, or exemplary damages. Those prayers, the cause of the suit, must be indicated under the plaint. So after the plaint, you go to the verifying affidavit. And verifying affidavit, uh, this is just an affidavit that is sworn by someone. So under affidavit, the procedure is the same. You must first of all indicate the country, the court, the civil the case number, civil case number, then the parties, then go to the verifying affidavit, then you start by saying maybe I Shushanyavu of post office box uh, number one or that number, and uh, you say that I have well read the matters of the plate, I'm, I'm versed with the matters here in, I'm ready to, uh, to swear this affidavit, and you then indicate uh, the content, and after that, you say that um, whatever that is said above is true to the best of my interest, knowledge, and information. Then, uh, there is, then you say, uh, sworn by me, Shushanyavu, uh, before uh, me, the commissioner of all that is be, be below the sworn by me, be, sworn by me, who you are, are swe swearing this affidavit. Then after that, you say, drawn and filed by, by that particular, by that particular uh, firm that has been associated. For example, you can say, um, uh, or, or and company advocate, post office address, uh, area of situation located at Upper Hill, uh, post office box, or you can say or gender and company advocates, or post office box number, this one, this one, uh, where it is located, email, and telephone number. So you need to note that when drafting affidavit, there is not dated, you cannot uh, place dated. I cannot say that dated that uh, this uh, you can, you can only just say this day of Tuesday, but you a place dated when drafting affidavits. So after affidavits, you go to the list of witness. So list of witness where you state the witness that are present in that particular case, and you start the procedure is the same. Republic and those those and don't apply but you the phone. After list of witness, you go to the documents and you get all the documents that are used. That were used, and after a list of uh, after a list of witness uh, list uh, witness statement first, then list of document that is the uh, comes at the end when you are drafting a plaint. So when you draft a plaint, you must first of all plaint that plaint uh, draft the plaint the first track, verifying affidavit, list of witness uh, witness statement, then list of documents. So another uh, draft another form. Another application that is involved in civil procedure have judicial review and judicial review application these are, are just um, orders by the judiciary that uh, demands all decisions of ex uh, administrative bodies, executive and legislature to be brought uh, before review by the judiciary. So judiciary reviews the decisions made by other organs of government. It's just one way of checking and balancing. So under judicial review we have grounds for judicial review. And this is against natural justice when that decision is against the natural justice, when that is business of excess power, when that decision was made under biasness, when there was error of law and all other grounds. So we have a remedies under judicial review and these are mandamus, sectorari and prohibition. So in drafting judicial review, there's the certain procedure that must be followed, we are going to look at it. So we also have injunctions and injunctions are covered for under order 40 of the civil procedure rules. And injunctions, uh, these are orders to stop uh, from beginning or continue uh, from doing a particular action. So these are just orders to stop an action from continuing or uh, from, from beginning. 
So injection are provided in Ireland of order 40, and when drafting injection must start with the uh, certificate of urgency, notice of motion, the supporting affidavit. Generally, most applications uh, will follow, the, follow that format of certificate of urgency, notice of motion, and supporting affidavit. These applications like injunctions, applications like Ganeshi of Ganeshi, applications of setting aside the amendments of plenty. Uh, there's many applications will follow that form, but not all applications. So uh, those are injunctions, and um, under injunctions you must also state uh, prayers, and the first prayer is standard, and the other prayers after the first prayers are not standard. So certificate, under certificate of urgency, after you have uh, indicated the country where you are, the case number and the court, the parties, you must first of all um, demonstrate your agencies under injunctions. You must uh, show the court that this matter is of uh, most urgency by demonstrating your agency. And then you indicate the facts uh, of uh, the, uh, and that when you are drafting that certificate of agency and at the end you say that unless you calculate, as you say, if this matter is not hard it's, uh, in that first instance, then uh, the plaintiff is, is bound to be prejudiced. So then you say drawn a fight by to be served upon. So we also have a notice of motion and this way we demand the court to take note. So you say take note that uh, this matter, the court should take note that this matter of at most agency, the, the, the court should take note that the defendant has, um, has uh, issued as uh, as uh, no, maybe has crossed a boundary and constructed a building in uh, in, the, in the plaintiff's property. The plaintiff of is, is, is suffered damages as a result. So injunction, these are orders that someone has done that is against the law or against the rights and interests of the plaintiff. So the court should take note that this matter of, of agency because the defenders have done A, B, C, D, and this one is in cost this 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 and that. And you must and then take notice notice of motion you must. Uh, indicate the grounds that you are taking the grounds must indicate the grounds so which application is based on the following grounds then you state all the, those grounds so after that you shall uh, go and draft uh, the supporting affidavit and this is just an affidavit that is sworn by someone uh, before me commissioner fourth uh, sworn by the person who has uh, sworn that have never before me commissioner and the fourth drawn and filed back to be served upon so you have other applications uh, like applications for stay of execution that will follow the same procedure. You have applications for execution that are provided under order 22. And um, execution is just uh, that mode of execution by auctioneers. So order 22 provides for uh, modes of execution, you have property execution, you have execution of um, salaries and uh, allowances. So you have uh, like we have modes of execution and the examples of these modes of execution are the decree execution, execution of um, debts under Ganeshi, execution is, uh, will appear there. We have execution of, um, we have execution of, um, uh, we have a Ganeshi, we have um, execution of debts, we have execution of uh, decree, we have execution of uh, property execution, we have execution of um, also uh, execution of attachment to movable property, and under this we, have, we must have a notice to show cause. And notice to show cause that means the defendant must be present. We have also um, attachment of immovable property as a mode of execution, and we also have um, committal to civil jail, attachment uh, committal to civil jail. Another this one there must also be a notice show cause in that the defendant must be present. So we have, like, we have this most of execution are um, execu execution for the attachment of a movable property, movable property, attachment of debts, attachment execution for decrease, a committal to civil jail, um, and uh, other, so those are the modes of execution. So we also have uh, types of decree. We have a money decree. Uh, we have a decrease of accounts and a property. So the process of uh, execution involves the process by auctioneers, and the auctioneers must come uh, by a warrant, must obtain a warrant from court, and this warrant is signed by court. 
So this is the permission for the auctioneers to auction a particular property. And there's the procedure for auctioneering. And this is the proclamation, uh, attachment, advertisement, and sale. So those proces processes must be followed by auctioneers after obtaining that uh, property. So um, auctioneer come after uh, by warrant of attachment that is signed uh, by the court. So uh, execution of debts is covered for under uh, order 23 of the civil procedure rules and here is where Ganeshi applications are um, come in. So Ganeshi applications, uh, these are applications uh, by, uh, this application where an order is claimed uh, to freeze an account for the defendant so that the defendants cannot access or withdraw money, in, uh, the money that they have in account. So an order is made to the Ganeshi, which is a bank, like Equity Bank, Barclays Bank, Standard Bank, any bank. So this bank shall come with a bank statement that confirms that uh, it is true that the defendants hold some money uh, with that bank after that order Nisi has been made. So um, that uh, that uh, Ganesha application or just applications orders to prevent the defendant from withdrawing money in uh, the account so that he can pay for the debt that he's having. So when you are filing Ganesha application, the procedure is the same certificate of urgency notice of motion they're supporting after David. And the parties here are the judgment data and the decree holder. So the judgment data is someone who is having that uh, amount, the defendant and the decree holder is like uh, the plaintiff. So the parties change. So after drafting those, you, you then say and drawn and find where to be served upon all applications when you are drafting the certificate of urgency, so you drafting notice of motion supporting after you must indicate drawn and find where to be served upon and the, co the country, the court, the case number must be present. So we also have other modes of execution. We have applications of substitution of the plaintiff where you substitute the plaintiff when you feel like when the plaintiff, that original plaintiff was present in that case, then it will be a uh, prejudice. So we substitute the, that plaintiff to a different plaintiff. The procedure is the same, notice of motion supporting affidavit, urgency no, notice of motion then supporting affidavit. So we also have applications for setting aside and stay of execution of judgment. So well, this is when you uh, make, you await, uh, you may, you, like when the judgment has been issued, you can set that, set aside that judgment for particular reasons. You can also set aside uh, uh, that judgment or a uh, stay of execution. Those are just applications to set aside judgment or to await uh, that uh, judgment, uh, not just to be um, commence immediately. So you also have other applications uh, that are drafted. You have uh, decrees and judgments. And uh, decree uh, is a judgment uh, made uh, by court. So when you're drafting a decree, you must start by indicating the country, uh, the case number, the court, the court, the case number, the parties. So when you, you are drafting a decree, you must uh, place the claim. For what are you claiming for? General damages, punitive damages, uh, cost of the pleadings, and uh, the matters before you indicate that particular uh, court, you indicate that particular judge you see hearing. Maybe before Justice Moving Gogi, a judge of the High Court of Kenya, before Justice Benaola Isaac, yeah, like just indicate them. And um, the matters the claiming for, after that, you indicate the, the court awards the judgment for the claim for this general damages, limited damages, and all the cost of the pleadings drawn and filed by to be served upon. So those are the applications uh, that uh, there are so many the applic other applications you are going to look at uh, them as time goes by. So we also have applications um, for pauperism, pauper applications, people who cannot afford uh, court fees. And these applications are uh, done by way of uh, notice of mo certificate of urgency, notice of motion supporting affidavit. Then uh, you say the statements of pauperism the defendant statements of the, that statement of pauperism, uh, verifying affidavit. So going to look at pauperism in details. So you also have amendments and amendments under amendment. Uh, this is where you feel like you want to amend some substance of a plaint, then you can amend them. And when you amend, uh, you must amend uh, by underlining the words that you have amended in a red, in a red pen and crossing the words that are not, well, crossing the words that you have amended with a different pen. 
So when you are meant, uh, for example, you are meant a plane, there are certain paragraphs of that plane. So when you are meant paragraph two, the paragraph two shall change to paragraph two a, the new amended paragraph. Paragraph three shall change to paragraph three a, the newly amended paragraph. So the one that you have amended, you cross with a different pen, and the new paragraph uh, you align uh, with a red pen. So under amendment statement of defense and counterclaim, uh, this is one, the one that is commenced by the certificate of agency notice of motion, then supporting a David. Then you say the defender statements of claims and counterclaim. Then you place counterclaims. Then you proceed and say uh, verifying affidavit. Uh, the verifying affidavit. Uh, then yeah, that's the end. So just stay in touch. You're going to look into more details about uh, drafting of this proceed, this uh, proceed, pleadings that are involved in civil procedure. The judicial review. I forgot to say the procedure. So the procedure certificate of agency. Mention notice, chamber someone, statutory statement of defense, um, verifying affidavit, notice of motion, they supporting affidavit. So that is when you are drafting judicial review. So you also have appeals, and appeals are drafted by a way of memorandum of appeal, then record of appeal. So going also to look at those documents when drafting appeals. So when you are not satisfied with that, satisfied with that decision under order five, you can under forty two, you can appeal that decision. So you also have review. A review is also another way when you are not satisfied with a decision, you can uh, review that uh, decision. So there are grounds for review when there is a mistake in uh, indicating the right statutory status of law, right sections of law, and all other grounds that are laid out. So just stay in touch, subscribe to the legal channel as you learn about more about judicial review. So that is the end, and have a nice day.